What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Before I get into this, I just want to start off. In Chantal's stream, she professed that I have a relationship with Kai Simons, which is 100% false. Chantal, for someone who spent most of their stream frustrated that people make things up about her, I know that a lot of people in the community love to embellish and make things up about me, and I traditionally don't respond to it, but I find it odd that you would create this narrative that myself and Kai had a relationship. So, the reality is, before I started this channel, I reached out to many creators, most creators in the space, to get a bearing for what the expectations were, what type of content they were creating, and to make sure that I could create something unique and purposeful in the space. That is what leads to someone being successful, not simply doing the same thing everyone else is doing. I would express to you, Chantal, if in starting a podcast, like you've claimed to do today, you would have done the same thing and attempted to reach out to successful podcasts and better understood the format, the context, how you could go about creating it. You would probably find the success that you'd like, but because you refuse to, you never quite accomplish that. So with that said, she starts this podcast off in silence and then says, welcome to the Overlook Hotel. She then goes through a sound check, which clearly should be done before you start recording. But again, I digress. Members come in and ask her what this is. She said she'll explain later. A number of them seem a little bit unhappy about a podcast, and she says right now she's stuck in bed. She's doing a live stream. She needs the camera off so that we don't see the bedroom. So she offers she's simply going to call this a podcast. She said she wants to do some interesting streams, but she isn't sure what the topics will be. She also admits she doesn't know much about streaming or what she's doing, but she did manage to have Sal apparently help her set up alerts for those who want to join or send super chats. She says this is not going to be a traditional podcast. It's not actually going to have a topic. Someone actually in the chat says she should talk about current events. She immediately declines. Someone also says she should have a set schedule for a podcast. She also immediately declines. She does, however, talk about her pain, the fact that she's bedbound, the pain and numbness have increased. She needs to have other tests done. She's been going to the clinic. She then tells this elaborate story about waiting for Sala to come home, having to get dressed in stages and rest due to the pain. She says she has a visa, despite claiming she would never talk about her status again. This visa allowed her to get the same medical care any expat would. While at the clinic, she said she was in tears. The doctor simply looked at her and wrote a prescription. She claimed she was delirious in pain. She was given an injection. She wasn't sure what it was. She assumes it's a steroid. She says that imaging needs to be done, but she can't lay down right now for that to happen. She says a wheelchair was needed to get her in and out of the clinic and continually goes back and forth on the diagnosis, that she wasn't diagnosed, only given something to deal with the pain, and she continues to say this is what it feels like. It must be. I find that very interesting. That That is the continual narrative she have. The This is what it feels like, not this is what I've been diagnosed with. She says for the moment she can't bathe. She later then talks about getting a hot shower. She's also vaping during the stream. I guess she felt like without people seeing her vape, they wouldn't know that she was, but many of them do call her out on it. They also call her out on a community post where she talked about a roommate that stunk. She said this was not Pete's. This was James, her first roommate who had a habit of buying garlic bologna and leaving it all over the home. She says she's now watching reaction channels. She's also watching Twitter, and she wants to expand to Twitter when it comes to reporting people, because she is being fat-shamed for hours. At one point, the chat interrupts her and says that she wasn't supposed to be talking about this anymore. She responds with having nothing else to talk about or do. She says she has emails to back everything up. She feels like she's the only one that can actually address or do anything about what's going on in Girl World. She says that her YouTube manager does nothing. She ignores them because they're useless. And the only time they contact her is when they want to make her channel successful. She ignores that because she feels they should do something about the hate channels first. And apart from whole the Kaya situation she brought up, this has got to be the most Chantal thing ever. So understand. This is Chantal's life. This is her income. And YouTube is reaching out to offer help to better her channel, increase her income. And her response is to slam her flippers into the table and refuse to listen until they do what she wants. She says she has issues with YouTube's reporting process and it does not work. She knows this based on her constant use of it. Because she can't do anything. Because she refuses to open copyright claims. And offers that reaction channels are all the same and she pays all our bills. The chat then actually interjects and says, Chantal, you constantly projected you were going the legal route. 
why aren't you claiming your content? She says that she 100% has a case, but the issue is she must be in Canada to pursue this, and she's not going to uproot her life to deal with it now. She was just in Canada and did absolutely nothing but go to dispensaries and fast food restaurants. She then worries about the stress involved with a case, and her chat tells her this is maybe why she needs to just do a reaction channel, and she admits as a reaction channel she would do wonders. She would burn all of us. But because she is a Muslim, she can't talk about others. That contradicts her beliefs. She says she doesn't understand how people just continue to talk about her and make things up. Yet yeah, again, in the beginning of this video, she literally made things up about me, and she says that people need to understand that she's changed. The more people that actually come into the video, the more people question what she's doing. And that also gives her more opportunity to contradict herself. She goes over the diagnosis a couple different ways. She has multiple times. She's just been prescribed vitamins. She says the pain goes from a scale of 1 to 10, with it right now being a 1, but other times being a 12. She says for dinner, she had to have chicken and rice because they had to order out. Sala apparently can't cook, and that's why she's been sitting there watching videos. Now, it's not all been reaction channels. She's been watching about her blood sugar as well. She says the benefit, though, of the pain is that she really hasn't wanted to eat. She says she may need the walker she had back from the villa again if this continues, and she's a little frustrated that she had a reach tool that she's now lost. She said apparently she gave it to her grandmother before she passed. She talks about how Pete's would be helpful when she had the issue before that he would go get the mail on certain days. Someone cites she may need to get a scooter, and she says at this moment it's not actually needed. She then diverts right back to reaction channels, how everyone has no life, how they simply go live the moment she does. She references the community post that she deleted being spoken about, and she says this is her life. She is a goddess. She's worth being talked about for hours on end. And someone asks, what are the reaction channels she enjoys? Because up until now, it's just been 40 minutes of banter. And she says that she likes the ones that don't go real life. The ones that don't just hit the space bar to chuckle and laugh. She offers that people need to find ways to make money outside covering her. She brings up FFG's views again for some reason. She continues to talk about how only people discuss her weight. She says that some people are entertaining and some people aren't. You either have it or you don't. And most reaction channels don't have any personality, intelligence, talking points, valid arguments, and she likens it to mean girls in high school. She says that, have no fear. Our day will come, that we just all parrot the same rhetoric, and that karma will apply to us, and it will be bad. She goes on to disliking my voice, but then offers at least I don't use her content, and she says that even if she wasn't on the platform, no one would be able to make money. That it's just all her haters converging in these channels. She says, though, she gets tons of subscribers and people who watch the reaction channels and then go to watch her. She, again, as I mentioned, goes on to talk about Natter, Kaya, really any member of the community gets brought up here. And the reality is, bedbound or not, the need to start drama at the end of the month was in full effect. She says that she can't stand watching reaction channels and then talks about them for near an hour. She says she can do a reaction channel, but everything she's done in this video is just very negative. Very, just not even entertaining. It's just listening to someone ramble on. The chat continually tried to divert her from her health. She responds with, you know, this is the internet. It's her job. It's not just a hobby like it is for them. So they don't understand. It's kind of that narrative of talking down to your audience when they're trying to get you in a better position and you push back and tell them that they don't understand, it's probably very likely how YouTube approaches her to try to improve her channel and she tries the same exact technique of you don't understand, this is my job. She goes on to talk about how she would never go back to Natter, how she never even talks about him despite bringing him up at least three times in this stream. She says reaction channels are all just a moot point because everyone has skeletons in their closet. She closes out frustrated with HelloFresh, asked the chat to give her topics for the next podcast, and asked if they wouldn't mind making her an avatar to go along with this as well. So with that said, Chantel, there's an hour of your content in less than 10 minutes that probably speaks to the quality and caliber of what you're creating. Best of luck with your podcast live stream and getting out of bed. I'm going to leave everyone with the top comments from the last video, which usually echo the sentiments of the video I've made incredibly well, and I will be back soon as I can with more content.